we're back in a kitchen. I've got a cup of coffee. It's like we're back to where we started on this channel. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio kitchen. <laughs> this is where I do food photography. And the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you feel more confident behind the camera. And yes, we are here in the new kitchen. I'm so thrilled to bring you in here and to be filming in here today. It feels like a dream come true. I definitely wanna take you on a tour of the rest of the studio, but just a couple other odds and ends to get finished on that front before we do that. But today we are talking about one of my favorite topics, of course, lighting. And when we talk about artificial lighting, you know, folks get really keyed up on the lights themselves. But to me, the lights are not as important as the modifiers, what we use to shape and direct and make the look of the lighting that we're going for. And now having my own lighting course that is comprehensive when it comes to different kinds of modifiers and styles and looks, like I have assembled quite a collection of modifiers over the years, but ultimately there's really three that when it comes to shooting for my own work and for clients that I primarily use. And so I do believe when we're talking about modifiers that, you know, there's different reasons that different folks like different ones but I thought it would be super helpful to share with you in this video what are the three that I most frequently use that are my personal favorites that like if you said you can only have three these would be the three that I would pick and I'll share with you the different reasons why I like these modifiers and also give you some very tangible examples of the kind of lighting that they create so that then you know as you're starting to consider modifiers for your own food photography that maybe you'll keep some of these things in mind and that might be helpful for you but before we do that I'm thrilled to share with you that today's video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 30,000 photographers that includes equipment insurance, education, and lots of business tools for small business owners like us. Now, I have been a member of Professional Photographers of America for years, and one of the really cool resources that you may not know about is their Indemnification Trust. And if you're like, wait, what is that? It's coverage specifically for situations where there may be some sort of data loss and you need to get some professional help recovering that data. Or if you end up with an unhappy client and find yourself dealing with legal fees, that is specifically what the indemnification trust is designed for and to help you out with. Now, of course, I hope to never have to use it, but it is nice to know it's there so that if I do find myself in one of those situations, all I have to do is call, file a claim, and Professional Photographers of America is there to help me out. And their assistance ranges from providing you advice if you need it, all the way to direct intervention in certain situations, even offsetting the costs of any losses. The Indemnification Trust is backed by one of the most experienced firms in the industry for helping out professional photographers. And of course, your membership not only gets you access to the Indemnification Trust, but also all of the other amazing benefits like the $15,000 worth of equipment insurance, which to me is a no-brainer for the low cost of your monthly membership. Now, if you head to the description box below this video, you'll see there's a link which gets you access to a code for a discount on your membership. And so whether you're just getting started in your career or you've been working professionally as a photographer for years, that indemnification trust can be a total lifesaver. Make sure to check out the link in the description box below for a special discount on your membership and a huge thank you to Professional Photographers of America for sponsoring this video. So the first modifier, this one to me is a great multi-purpose, general use, works in a wide variety of situations. Also super easy to assemble and super easy to take down. This is the modifier that I would say if you're getting started in artificial lighting, like get this modifier or something comparable to it in terms of the size and the shape. And I will say the assembly process just like makes this one such a winner. So this is the Glow Easy Lock 31 inch by 47 inch. So the reason that I like this size is that the size of the modifier is big, but it's not gigantic, but it creates really nice soft lighting for food photography. When we think about modifiers, that if you're a natural light shooter and maybe you have a window that you absolutely love to shoot in, like we want to recreate that look by creating a modifier, working with a modifier that's similar to the shape and size of the window that you've been working with. So to me, this really replicates that natural window light look. And like all the modifiers that I'm going to share with 
you here today. This works with speed lights, it works with strobes, it works with LED lights. So I use this modifier for my stills photography, but also for video. I'm actually using it right now. It's up right over here on the left, lighting my face. But it's a Bowens mount softbox, which just refers to that attachment that's on the back side of it that allows you to attach it to different kinds of Bowens mount lights. So for example, my Flashpoint AD600 lights, it attaches to those. Or if I'm working with a speed light with an S2 bracket that has a Bowens mount fixture to it, that I can use that. But then also working with my LED lights, which also take a Bowens mount. So again, just thinking about that versatility factor when you start to invest in your equipment. But so you can see this example image here of these grapes. I shot this with that particular softbox with my strobe. And you can see it's just created really nice, defined, clean, straightforward, yet soft lighting. Now, one thing too, though, that I sometimes do with these particular kinds of modifiers, where you can see on the inside, we have this diffusion material, that inner diffusion material called a baffle. And the purpose of the baffle is to help spread the light more evenly across the front surface of the softbox. But sometimes what I will do is take off the front diffusion material. So I'm only working with the baffle. And this is going to create a little bit of extra intensity in terms of the way that the light is falling on the scene. You can actually see a little comparison here of with the front diffusion material and then taking off the front diffusion material sort of that before and after factor. And it just adds a little bit of extra punch and contrast, which isn't necessarily what you're always going for. But particularly if you are somebody who's really looking to replicate that natural light look and you study natural light, like a lot of times, depending on where you live in the world and the kinds of windows you're working with in those kinds of situations, you can notice a little bit of extra intensity in that lighting and in those shadows in the contrast working with natural light. And so this can be sometimes a little trick that I'll employ to get that more natural light look. So obviously like the shape and the size and all of those different factors with this softbox, you can find that in a lot of different kinds of softboxes. But this one in particular, the reason that I am so over the moon on it and so sold on it is because of the way it assembles. If you have ever attempted to assemble a traditional style softbox with the rods and all that, it can become very overwhelming and frustrating and takes a lot of time and effort and a certain amount of muscle to make those things happen. Whereas this particular softbox, it opens up like an umbrella. So you just have to push down that interior, that center column, you affix it to the back of the softbox and it opens just like an umbrella would. It is super easy. This takes no time. And so if you're shooting on location and you don't want to be wrestling with soft boxes or you're shooting at home and you can't leave your soft boxes always, you know, up because you've got a kitchen table to deal with, or if you need to easily store your soft boxes away, put them up, take them down. Like this to me is a game changer. And so I definitely recommend as you're looking at soft boxes and modifiers, like anything that is umbrella style or easy to assemble to me is going to be so incredibly important. Unless you're working in a situation where your softboxes are just always assembled, they're always up, so you're never taking them down, that's great. But I think a lot of people need them up and need them down, and this just makes it so much easier. So modifier number two, this one, if you follow my behind the scenes over on Instagram, you spent any time on this channel, you've seen me use this one before. It's a favorite. It is the Westcott Scrim Gym Cineframe, and it is the four foot by four foot in particular. I love this modifier because it's incredibly versatile. Like you could create so many different looks with this one modifier. Now I will say, I kind of refer to this as like the freestyle modifier because it's not constructed in a way like a softbox is where everything's more or less kind of fixed where it's going to be, that what you see is what you get. You can't really change things up too much in terms of the way that the softbox behaves, other than maybe you know taking out that front diffusion material or using cards and flags or other things to bounce light or to block light. But this particular modifier, what we can do is we can position the light in different places relative to that scrim. So what I do is I put the scrim right up next to the scene, kind of, again, thinking about the scrim as if it's a window, if you're a natural light shooter, I think 
think that's a great place to start. So there's my window. And then I can place my light, my sun, anywhere that I want. I can have it way high up. I can have it low down. I can have it to the side. And you can see as I've taken a shot of these grapes, you know, just kind of getting that standard basic look of the light behind it. But if I just move that position, like just shimmy it down a little bit more, how that impacts the way that the light looks. So I will say for that reason, this particular modifier does require a certain amount of like patience and learning that it's not like just straight up out the box you put it on a light and you're rocking and rolling like you do have to sort of get used to it and finesse it and see what works well for you but you can cast the direction of the shadows differently but then the other thing that i love about this modifier is that i can swap out the thickness of that diffusion material because i'm sure there's some folks who are looking at this thinking oh well how is that any different than a five in one reflector right like those big bendy ones that are hard to fold up this is similar in that sort of concept of we can take our light we can diffuse it but we can customize it even further by having different thicknesses of diffusion material so on a five-in-one reflector i think we're usually what three quarter to a full stop of that thickness so it's fairly thick so it really creates really nice soft light which is great but this modifier i can go swap in for example my quarter stop diffusion which you can see as i put that here on the frame it's much more sheer in comparison to what was the full stop diffusion material. So we get a lot more light penetrating through, coming through that scrim. And you can see now just as a comparison photo of the full stop versus the quarter stop. And that quarter stop does a really great job of creating that look where it's sort of the hard light, but it's still got a certain amount of softness and you know, shooting here also on a lighter surface, helping to create a lot of additional fill light. So that is definitely a popular look in food photography. So that quarter stop diffusion can create sort of that magical sun light look as well. But then there's also half stop and three quarter stop. So this again is where you get into that versatility and customization out of one single modifier. And then as far as like actually setting this bad boy up, because you may be thinking, wait, how do I, how do I actually put that next to my scene? Do I use a light stand? I use a C stand. So it's a much more heavy weighted, heavy duty because this frame does have a certain amount of weight to it. So a standard light stand is not going to work for you, but there is a really nice clamp that Westcott makes that then has this peg in it, which we can just insert to the top of our C-stand there, really firmly mount that so it's nice and secure, counterweight that with some sandbags and you are good to go. But again, like that Bones Mount softbox, you know, we don't necessarily need to worry about mounts on the lights, but I can position a speed light behind this scrim. I can position a strobe or an LED light. Like I can shape whatever light source I'm using through that scrim. And so modifier number three, the Westcott Rapid Switch Box. And it's specifically the one foot by two foot, which is a strip softbox. So really nice narrow rectangle. Now I will say about this modifier, this is not going to be your general purpose modifier like the other two like you could do 99% of your food photography with those other two mod like one of those other two modifiers and be good to go but this one's a little bit more specialty but I still use it frequently most of the time this is my go-to if I'm creating really low-key shots right so that dark and moody sort of style where we have a lot of darkness where we want to create this really narrow sort of strip of light using a strip softbox for that because it's not spreading the light out for us it's really narrowing that down you can see that here i've swapped in a dark background with those grapes and we've got oh, moody vibes for days we can make that even moodier by then applying the egg crate or the grid the honeycomb whatever you want to call it called the grid <laughs> by attaching that to the front of it that is further limiting the spread of the light and you can see oh we've added even more drama to the equation so if you are like dark and moody vibes and shadows are like your happy place this is going to be a great modifier for you now you don't have to only use it for those you know low key shots it works great too in high key situations but it's going to create a bit more contrast and a harder light look right you're going to have more definition in those shadows because it is a smaller size of softbox a smaller light source and you can see that in comparison to going back to that first modifier that 31 by 47 and then switching that out to the one foot by two foot and how that has changed the look of the light again nothing's good or bad right or wrong 
better or worse. It's all a matter of the look that you're trying to create, the subject, the story you're trying to tell. That is why lighting is so much fun. That's why I love artificial lighting is that we can use these different modifiers to create different looks. But then just like that first softbox, again, one of the very compelling reasons for this particular softbox, because you can get softboxes that are this size by all sorts of different manufacturers. Some of them, you know, you just have to manually put them together and insert the rods and all that jazz. But this one just whoop, opens up super easy. We just slide that center piece right down over the middle and then we can affix the diffusion material, pop it on to our Bowens mount and we are off to the races. But then the other application for this modifier in particular that I definitely use it a lot for is in product and in drinks photography. Because of the shape of it, it's gonna create really nice, appealing, clean reflections in our glassware or other shiny packages or products. That if I were using maybe a round or an octagon softbox, those are great, create really lovely wraparound light. But sometimes depending on the subject and the reflections, it may create sort of a circular reflection in the equation and so by using something with straight edges and straight lines creating those really nice clean highlights for us now if I want to additionally diffuse those highlights and create a really nice gradient that's when I bust out then modifier number two for some additional diffusion material which helps to really spread that light out more evenly and create these really lovely soft highlights now certainly the condensation on the iced tea in this situation also helped to really make those highlights a little bit more gradient but for sure that combination of a scrim with a strip softbox can be really great, especially if you're doing products and drinks photography. But now are these the only modifiers that I ever use? No, I mean, my shoot through umbrella, that's a favorite when shooting on location at restaurants. And I absolutely still have reasons for my five in one reflector. And I've got some bigger umbrellas like there. I've got my octagon softbox. There's so many great modifiers out there and it really depends on the application and needs that you have. Now, if you want help really distilling down what are the modifiers that are gonna work best for you, I would love to have you in our Artificial Academy course. We have a ton of fun in there, lots of personalized support to really help to understand what's gonna work best for you, as well as teach you how to use all of these fun and wild and crazy lights. And so with that, I hope you learned some things. I hope you feel more excited about shooting with artificial light or maybe looking forward to some new modifiers in the future. Like I said, everything is linked down below. So you need any of that gear, go check that out. But as always, thank you so much for stopping by. We have a fantastic day. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon. All right. Bye.